Dr. Monica Gandhi is a professor of medicine of infectious disease at San Francisco General Hospital, joining us tonight to talk about this. Uh, Dr. Gandhi, it's always good to see you. So, Michelle, this woman who we just heard from receiving these rabies shots, antivirals, is it concerning that she's experiencing flu-like symptoms, pink eye after coming in contact with these monkeys? So it's true that macaques, which I think these monkeys, these primates were, um, can carry herpes B infection, which is um, in the herpes virus family. It's actually really hard, however, to get herpes B infection from macaques. Uh, it usually takes an attack or something um, quite uh, a ma more massive contact than what's described here with lacerations or bites. Um, so hopefully there was no exposure. And the um, actually the, the symptoms of it aren't uh, what was just described with pink eye. It really is, um, it, it absolutely can be very, very serious if humans contract it. Um, but usually it's, it's actually brain related and there's paralysis, um, agitation, blurred vision, um, and an increase in sensitivity to stimuli. So I'm very hopeful that there was no exposure to herpes B. It is a serious, very serious herpes infection and it does require a cyclovir um, or valacyclovir and then rabies usually takes post-exposure prophylaxis if there's been exposure to wild animal usually does take immunoglobulin injections um, and multiple days after the exposure. Mm. Well uh, these macaque monkeys if they do in fact carry these these very dangerous diseases are you surprised that the monkeys hadn't been quarantined at all before arriving here in the U.S. they were in this truck uh, headed to Missouri what's standard practice in a situation like this? Um, so to be fair, again, they are 70% uh, of macaques do carry herpes B, but it really does take um, a huge amount of exposure to get the infection. In fact, healthcare workers or laboratory workers who work with these animals really re um, need laceration or bites. So I'm hopeful, again, that she didn't get it. But yes, I mean, of course, uh, it's certainly macaques. It's something to know about that macaques can carry this very rare infection that can be transmitted to humans, so probably signs or some way to indicate that on the truck. You know, some may question, I, I certainly did today, given what we've seen in recent years in the news, how often these animals are being used for biomedical testing, especially after a number of facilities, Harvard being one, have closed uh, the practice of doing this in recent years. How common is it still uh, for these, these primates to be used in testing? So, you know, um, it's true that primate-related research is still actually quite common. It is macaques specifically are used in the setting of HIV research um, because they're, they have a simian immunodeficiency virus that resembles HIV. It should be closely regulated. It should be limited because they are primates, but it is really their primate research facilities, and it's not uncommon funded by the NIH. Mm. And, and a lot of benefits from doing this type of research, I would assume, certainly in the medical community. Community. They're the closest to us as humans, so that's why they're needed, yes. You know, it, it struck me, she's going through this rabies shot um, and antivirals. You know, that process, when people come in contact with bats or other wild animals, um, what is that, that like for the person who's going through it? Well, it's true that the rabies post, what's called post-exposure prophylaxis is not easy. So um, on the day of exposure, you get both the rabies vaccine and also what's called immunoglobulin. This is actually giving people antibodies that were generated uh, uh, to protect you from rabies if for some reason you did get the virus in your system and you get that at days one, the day of exposure, then three, seven, and 14. So it is long needles, it is shots. Um, and that's required for post-exposure prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, on the other hand, it's been life-saving. There's actually, rabies is very, very lethal to humans, and um, this is extremely life-saving. Luckily, again, even the exposure she, she um, describes hopefully didn't even uh, lead to rabies, but this is the, the prudent thing to do. Yeah, unnerving nonetheless. And I, I do want to yes. mention the USDA investigating. PETA has filed a complaint urging the U.S. to stop importing monkeys for, experience, for experiments. Uh, hoping the best for this woman. She has experienced, as I said, flu-like and pink eye symptoms. Dr. Gandhi, uh, this is a bizarre one. Um, we appreciate you coming on and yeah. giving us we'll a, little, we'll next time. <laughs> a little bit of insight. All right. Thanks. Okay. Always good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.